It's so hard to watch again. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today we'll be picking up where we left off a year ago and checking in on YouTuber Amberlynn Reed. Now before we get into it, you can pause the screen or look at the description to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning to those with current or previous experiences with disordered eating. As always, feel free to skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring that little bell so that you never miss out on an episode. And if you're not already, definitely follow me at at Abby's Kitchen over on Instagram and TikTok. Now, if you missed my previous review on Amberlynn, be sure to check that out right here first. But to quickly recap, Amberlynn started her channel to document her weight loss journey and has dabbled in nearly every diet under the sun since. However, despite her efforts, she continues to struggle with binge eating disorder, which in turn has resulted in additional weight gain and a horribly vicious cycle of online bullying and fat phobia. So in today's video, we'll be following up on Amberlynn and also taking a look at where she is right now, both from a nutrition and recovery standpoint. But before we get into some of her current meals, I want to take a look and comment on some of the clips from her response to my response. Yes. We're responding to a response to a response. Dream within a dream, huh? I'm impressed. It's gonna get intense. It's sad to know that food completely has ruined my life. And I regret so much. It is hard. It is so hard to have this food addiction and this binge disorder. To think that food made it to where I can't even have a child. I didn't know she was gonna bring out my cancer, I didn't. And I hate thinking about the fact that I had cancer and I hope that I don't anymore. So it's like, I try to never think about it. And the fact that she keeps bringing it up, it's like, it almost feels like every time she talks about it, I'm like being smacked in the face. And I guess I kind of deserve it. <laughs> That's so hard to watch. So I admittedly didn't watch this response video when it was posted like a year ago exactly. And I full out like full out sobbed the other day when I watched it for the first time. And I'm still obviously very emotional just seeing her face and hearing those words. So for one, I'm very sorry that I triggered Amberlynn about that cancer diagnosis. I feel very strongly that she does not deserve it, like she says. And I'm sorry if other healthcare providers have made her feel that way. But I know what it's like to feel responsible for your own infertility. It's so hard. Obviously, you know, my eating history is different than Amberlynn's, but it landed me in a very similar place. And while the outcome on my fertility, you know, wasn't as finite in that I still have my uterus and no one said with certainty that my ED caused my infertility, but I feel in my heart that it's very likely that it played a role because I had chronic um, and menorrhea and thin uterine lining, which really made it hard for me to conceive. It's triggering for me too. She's right, to be honest. I'm very all about low calorie, even if it's like not the right type of food for me. Okay, let's compose ourselves. I'm glad that some of the things I said here were eye-opening to Amberlynn because, you know, it's very common for chronic dieters to always be thinking less is always more. But you know, this is actually one of the biggest weight loss mistakes that I see people make as it can contribute to like a very sluggish metabolism and it tends to create the perfect storm for a binge. Not to mention, you know, chronically under eating is devastating to folks with binge eating tendencies. So this is really like a double whammy for Amberlynn. Whammy! Why is it okay for people to judge me, make fun of me, AKA binge monster and all these things and in validate the fact that, you know, I do have eating disorder, I do have food problems. But then if it's like a skinny person with these problems, people don't ever make fun of them. That's something that I just like, I don't understand. It's not fair. It's very hypocritical. Yes, this, 100% this. I mean, 
One of the most obvious examples of fat phobia is this right here. That, you know, a fat person can be hated on for having an ED, but a skinny person is given support, empathy, and care. Or the example that I gave in my last video, you know, with the public reactions to mukbangs online. You know, we see like slim, fit, always hungry, will eat 10,000 calories and viewers will cheer her on. But fat Amber Lynn eats like a normal meal or a small meal that's like salad and she's basically given death threats. It's f***ed up. And if you don't see that it's f***ed up, you are part of the problem. Sorry for the tough love, but yeah, it's bad. And I feel for her on that one. Wow, this is like making me realize that I only ever eat out of emotional hunger. I've always thought of my weight as a symptom of something else. And it's most definitely a symptom of my binge eating, which then in fact, in my opinion, is a symptom of something even higher. I'm gonna talk about this shortly when we look at some of her recent meals. And also, you know, I don't know Amberlynn personally or professionally, obviously, but Generally speaking, yeah, like binge eating and resulting obesity is rarely a result of food just tasting really good or having a really big appetite. You know, eating becomes this ineffective coping mechanism used to suppress negative emotions that maybe we don't have the tools to otherwise manage. And therefore losing weight is a lot more involved than just shrinking portions or buying locale ice cream. I read these comments as a job. I feel like it's important that I do read the comments here and there and it they make me feel unworthy and like I'm not good enough of good things and it just puts me in a really dark hole. I just want to be normal. <laughs> I want to be normal. I want to be that person and just knowing that I never will be is Oh, it's so hard to wrap my head around. I know that a lot of people will call out Amber Lynn as being a troll and that she's making herself sick and sabotaging herself for the sake of views and ad revenue on YouTube. But how can you watch someone crying here, wishing that they had a normal life and not think to yourself, you know, wow, even if this is just 1% truth, this is heartbreaking. And I don't know if it's like the mom in me, but I'm having just like this real maternal reaction to this. And I imagine my own kids feeling unworthy and unnormal. And I would be so f***ing mad at the world for making them feel that way. So Amberlynn, if you are a real person and this is not like a YouTube click scheme for views, like everyone says, and you want to talk to someone, reach out, reach out anytime. I'm always happy to talk. In the meantime, here, I do wanna show all of you a recap of some of my overarching recommendations from her diet review from last year. So in terms of my overall thoughts on Amberlynn's diet, at least based on what we're seeing in these 2020 What I In A Day videos, her portion sizes are not particularly big. In fact, at times, they might just not be big enough and that can set you up for a binge really quickly. But we do have some generally balanced meals to work with. There is of course some room to optimize the nutrition in some of Amberlynn's meals, particularly to ensure that she is satiated and then not setting herself up for a binge with an adequate calories at mealtimes, and also to make sure that she's getting in the antioxidants for cancer prevention. So for example, adding in extra nutrition from protein and fiber would help to make her meals more satiating, keeping her blood sugar levels in check, and of course, helping to keep her fuller for longer without adding in a ton of calories, which may potentially reduce the urge to binge later on in the day. Also, focusing on lots of colorful fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, and soy protein may help to reduce her risk of future cancer. Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a look at some of Amberlynn's recent What I In A Days at the time of filming, starting with some breakfast. So for my first meal, which is breakfast, I will be having two slices of turkey bacon, avocado toast. It's like an oat nut bread, which is so delicious. Obviously the avocado, an egg moment, and Cholula, you guys know me. One of my main pieces of advice for Amber Lynn from my previous review was to use my hunger crushing combo in meals. So basically we want to ensure she's feeling satiated and satisfied so she doesn't need to make up for calories lost with a late night binge. And I am seeing some good balance at play here. So we've got protein from the egg and the turkey bacon. We've got some healthy fats from the avocado. And of course we've got some fiber rich carbs in the bread. Some other examples of Amber Lynn's breakfast 
include waffles with peanut butter or a bowl of packet oatmeal, each served with a side of turkey bacon. These meals do have some hunger crushing compounds in the mix, but I do think that there's room to actually add more. The portions seem pretty small, especially that oatmeal bowl, which definitely wouldn't hold me for very long, which suggests that there may be some metabolic suppression and blunted hunger and fullness cues at play. But nutrition wise, these meals range from about 280 calories to about 400, and they're all under 15 grams of protein. And we do know how important a protein rich breakfast is for satiety and weight management if that's her goal. When a situation like this, I would be keen to keep slowly edging that breakfast meal up in calories and protein to try to stimulate those hunger and fullness cues. So we could do like a side of Greek yogurt with the waffles, an extra egg with the avocado toast, some protein powder in the oats, or a protein smoothie on the side for any of them. And I would also use the opportunity to maybe sneak in some extra produce with some fruit for some micronutrients and extra fiber. Let's take a look at a standard lunch. I'm gonna have a TV dinner. It's saffron road chicken biryani with basmati rice. I'm also gonna make some green beans. I like to have a super simple lunch. So I'm cooking the green beans on the stove. I added onion powder, minced onion, garlic salt, black pepper, and tapatio. Here are the green beans. Here's the chicken biryani. If I'm smells so damn good. Amberlynn often leans on frozen microwave dinners like this chicken biryani rice bowl, or on other days she does like a kale pasta or a curry chicken. So in the chicken biryani example, we've got some protein from the chicken, we've got carbs from the rice, maybe there's a bit of fat in there in the sauce, but generally, like most TV dinners, we're looking at a meal that is low in volume, so it's also low in fiber and vegetables, and because it is quite small, this is again some evidence that there may be some metabolic and hunger cue damage going on. But I love that she bulked this meal up with some green beans on the side, and I would love to see her utilize that same technique anytime she opts for one of these frozen convenience meals. Not only does this little addition boost the fiber and the micronutrients and the volume, but the potassium in the vegetables like spinach, tomatoes, broccoli, or asparagus can also help to counterbalance the higher amounts of sodium in these kinds of meals. I think sodium recommendations are definitely a contested area of knowledge right now, but excess sodium is known as a risk factor for hypertension in some populations, and it may also contribute to unwanted water retention, which could throw off any potential weight loss progress on the scale. So in this case, the chicken biryani lunch provides almost half of Amberlynn's daily sodium recommendations for the day and only 6% of her fiber. So if you want to use canned vegetables like she did, just make sure you're going for a no salt added variety. Or one thing that I always do is I would just add in like a bowl of frozen vegetables into the microwave while her meal is cooking. And then you can just kind of mix them all together into the residual sauce. All right, let's move on to Amberlynn's snacks. I love green olives and black olives, but I'm about to have large olives. So that is what I've been snacking on is having a few pickles. I prefer the baby pickles. They're literally the best texture ever. I'm going to have peppered beef jerky. Normally I have something sweet at the end of the night, like a frozen yogurt. So Amberlynn will usually snack on pickles, olives, or beef jerky, which she says can help to satisfy her salty craving for chips. And while they may have fewer calories and fat than chips, depending on the portion, they often also contain even more sodium per serving than like lightly salted chips. But rather than taking any of these salty snacks away, we can give them my hunger crushing combo treatment by pairing them with a handful of unsalted nuts or seeds. This will not only provide some protein and some healthy fats for increased satiety, but they're also a great source of potassium, which as I mentioned earlier, will help to balance some of the excess sodium content. Now for a sweet fix, Amberlynn reaches for pineapple or some chocolate Greek yogurt bite. Now these are great lower calorie options, but again, we can bump up their staying power by pairing them with a bowl of cottage cheese or Greek yogurt for some protein and fat. Lastly, let's move on to dinner. Guys, so right now I'm cooking some chicken because I'm having a chicken salad tonight. All right, so here's my salad. We have some kale, sunflower seeds, 
the chicken, and this is like a poppy dressing moment. Okay, so as a dinner one night, Amberlynn does a pre-made kale salad mix with some chicken. So here we've got some protein in the chicken, fat in the seeds and dressing, and some fiber in the green. Now, if this is enjoyable and satiating to Amberlynn, great. But a lot of folks who struggle with binge eating or overeating episodes find that these low carb meals often leave them physically and or psychologically unsatisfied, which in turn triggers a binge. So I would love to see some carbs in the mix. So maybe adding in some pre-cooked quinoa or sweet potato or stuffing it into a whole green pita. Now on other nights, Amberlynn does a Chick-fil-A chicken lettuce wrap with a little sriracha mayo for dipping or a bowl of turkey meatballs with rice and steamed broccoli. I love these meals. I mean, we aren't skimping on comfort or flavor or protein or carbs and we got a little veggie action in the mix. So if we keep this general formula in our head. You know, we wanna get some protein and some fat with some kind of meat and fish or poultry or vegetarian protein. We wanna make sure we're getting some carbs with like noodles, rice, potatoes, bread, or quinoa, and then any vegetables that you like. I think we'll find ourselves better able to get to bedtime without overwhelming night cravings. Now, with all that said, what are my overall thoughts on Amberlynn's diet? So I would say that we're seeing some mild improvements from my last assessment, namely more meal consistency and some generally balanced meals. But as I said in my previous review, I still feel that she's under eating. I know everyone sees a person in a larger body and assumes that they must be eating like 5,000 calories a day, but often, as we can see here, that isn't actually the case. It looks to me like Amberlynn is eating as little as 1,200 calories a day with just not enough protein, fiber, calcium, iron, potassium, or other important nutrients. And the potassium piece is again so critical when sodium intake is higher like it is here. And despite not being a lot of food, Amberlynn doesn't really seem to be phased by this, likely because of some metabolic and hunger cue disruption. Now I spoke to my colleague, Alessandra Magisano, who specializes in eating disorders like BED. And while she suggested we generally don't recommend weight loss in eating disorder treatment, she said Said that it can be very carefully done in certain situations, but it would require a very skilled clinical team to be done safely. Now, even if weight loss was indicated and safe as a goal, Alessandra suggested in her clinic, it would be very, very rare to ever start a patient or client below 1500 calories due to the risk of perpetuating that metabolic damage. So while Amberlin isn't my client and therefore my recommendations are not specifically for her, in a scenario like this, my focus would likely be on putting the intentional weight loss and the idea of restriction on the back burner so that we can really focus on building up that body trust through adequate nutrition. And that means we actually work up to eating more. So more calories, more protein, more carbs, more fiber. <laughs> And of course, I want to acknowledge that Amberlynn is slowly making some headway here by no longer relying on crash diets for quick weight loss. But when her knee-jerk reaction is to restrict further when she doesn't hit her monthly weight loss targets, we do continue to see that deep-seated diet mentality emerge. And again, while I really do empathize with Amberlynn's strong desire to lose weight to improve her quality of life and her mobility and overall health, I think it's really important to be working with an eating disorder team on a safe and supportive strategy. A strategy that doesn't risk long-term metabolic health issues, malnutrition, or sustained disordered eating tendencies. So some gentle nutrition tips for someone like Amberlynn might look like A, making sure that meals are consistently balanced and we're adding protein to breakfast and snacks, some veggies to lunch, and some carbs to dinner. B, focusing on variety and diversity, which will also help to balance out some of the excess sodium from some of the convenience type meals. And C, increasing portion portion sizes over time until we start to feel hunger and fullness cues emerge. So while these recommendations do not explicitly focus on weight loss, over time, they may potentially encourage weight loss in a more sustainable and supportive way without the scarcity mentality. And on that note, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on who you'd like to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.